All right, we're on, and I've got Mike working. Let's jump back into here. Let's jump over to course modules. Turn off the editing so you see it the way that I see it, the way you see it. And let's scroll down here. And we're looking at understanding by design. Pop back over here. Gary's here. Hey, Gary. Got a few more minutes and then we'll get started. Okay, let's get started. I had to, I'm sorry for the dead air there at the beginning. I had to make sure that we had this room. Um, I've had people walk in on me on this, uh, this class and it's like, uh, hello. So I want to make sure we were in this room for a while. Gary, it looks like it's just you and me, buddy. Um, I tell you, I'm not too early, am I? We did all agree on 430, didn't we? Okay, well, let's just dive into it. We don't have a lot to do tonight. I just want to, first of all, I want to apologize. I don't think I did a very good job last week of uh, explaining understanding by design. So I hope what I was think, thinking of doing tonight was to go through the assignment. And that way we could, and that way I could, explain it better if we actually went through the assignment and I showed you um, what I'm hoping you can do. Um, I'm not going to go through the GoAnimate assignment because you all know how to use GoAnimate. Uh, just, uh, you know, enjoy it. Read the article, uh, putting understanding first, figure out uh, how you would demonstrate what kind of teacher you are, develop it. But what I want to do is I want to land here and I want to spend the time working on the understanding by design lesson format because this is the format that we will use for our final. Let me roll down here and here it is. Now, one of the things that I find that people complain about with understanding by design, people who do technology, 
is that they say that Wiggins and McTeague don't really talk explicitly about technology. I would disagree with that. Um, I think they do. There is an understanding that they have about how things work in classrooms. And so that's why if you look here at this format that this is their format, by the way, not Steve's format. You'll see that I did add the parentheses of the technology may be embedded here. I want to stress to you as you think about designing this thing, this five lesson mini unit, that the technology may be embedded here doesn't mean you have to put it in there. You figure out in which one of these areas would technology fit and then put that in there. So um, let's go back up here because the other thing I have to show you is how you do the other piece. It says here to demonstrate our understanding, let's apply our understanding by making a UBD lesson storyboard that reflects a lesson topic standard you teach. And we're going to use this website called Storyboard That. Now, the way this will work, and I guess there's no other way to do it except just to dive right in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link here. And for some reason, I can't get it to open in a new window. So I'm going to just click there, which will do the same thing. And here we are. And so she's, Rebecca's done a really nice job here of putting all this information in, as well as the links out to storyboard that. So I'm going to show you how to do it. You don't need to worry about getting, um, you know, uh, a teacher thing and all that. You don't have to do any of that. So just hang in here with me. So let's look, though, at the stages of understanding by design. We look at what are the, understand, the identified desired results. Can't start the journey unless you know where you're going. Very straightforward. Then you want to determine what are we going to take is evidence that kids understand what it is we're trying to do. And that all that understanding should have transference be applied. If we, I said that enough last week. I hope you realize what I meant. Transfer applied, same thing. And then finally, create the learning plans. In other words, figure out what it is that they're actually going to do. Okay. So if we scroll down through here, she does a really nice job of talking about how we do this. And the first part is we establish goals. Where are we going? We construct understandings. What are they going to do? We write the essential question, which is not a question that has a easy answer. Well, easy answer is a wrong way to describe it, but an answer that can be found um, just by simply either looking it up or regurgitating, you have to think, you have to expand. And then the last two pieces you do is students will know and students will be able to. In other words, students will be able to do something based upon what they know. That's the transference piece, four and five. Straight up simple. So if you look at, this is where you come in. Here's the UBD template stage one that this person has created for us in this in this uh, application called Storyboard That. Now I'm going to walk through it and show you how to do it. I'll come back to this, um, and then we'll go through the other two stages. So I'm going to click on this link that says Customize the Storyboard, and it's going to ask me to log in. Everybody is logging in the same way, just like we log in when we do, um, oh, infographic, well, go animate, you know, when we use those kind of tools. So I'm going to say, I already have an account, thanks. I'm going to log in. And my account is, this is a little bit different, the SBSwan02, but I don't need to use the um, at louisville.edu thing. Okay, so it's just SBSwan02. Zero two, and then I'm going to do ULIT, uh, ULIT, 
the ULIT241. You know, I don't think I typed that right. Let me try it again. ULIT241. Okay, now I'm going to log in. Now, when I do that, it takes me to her template that she created. Realizing, though, each one of you is going to come in, even though you're coming in as Steve, you want to create this thing uh, for your own particular goals, okay? So if we look up here, what it says is establish goals. Now, she has on her little blackboard, this little picture thing that she's created. She's got on the blackboard, workshop, writing and smart goal. I can go and double click on that. And I can change that. Okay. And when I do that, and I click on it, it will change what I've written there. I can click on this one. I can move all these things around, by the way. And that's what I'm doing here to make it all look right. Okay. Then she's got a little bubble here. And the nice thing about it is they've already put in um, the, uh, the, the language of the UBD language. So it says, my students will know fact from opinion. And I will know that they understand it because they will be able to identify fact or opinion. So as you see, as I go in and do this, It changes it for me. And I just click out and there it is. Then I go to the next box. And she says, if I expect my students to learn X, then they need to know A, B, C. So you just go in and you change the language here. Okay, let's uh, fix that. My grammar is popping in and going crazy. What's wrong with discriminate? Did I spell it wrong? Yes, okay. Discriminate between fact and fiction. They need to know what is opinion. As you see, it changes it as I go along. Now, you can just go through and follow these prompts. If you want to play around with the look of the thing, feel free. It's very easy to work with. You just go in, see this whole um, background can be easily changed into whatever you want it to be. Just by dragging things in, it's just not hard to do. And as you can see, then what I can do is highlight and I can delete it out. And I can put in my own stuff. Do we have to change it, Steve? No. You don't change it at all. Okay. I'm just showing you that you can. Okay. If I expect my students to learn to demonstrate between fact and opinion, then they need to understand what is opinion. Now that I need to pull that out a little bit so it shows up better. Okay. And then I can go over here to the last one. The essential question. So the essential question here, I may have to totally do this one totally
what would news be without facts? Now, I can, I want to stress, I can go in here and I can change all of this, okay? This is, all she's done is she's just put in some stuff with blanks for me to, you know, write within. So if you want to do that, you can, or you can just use her blanks and fill things in. Either way. And then finally, we get over here to the end result after unit. In other words, what is at the end of the unit? My students should be able to. They should also know the difference between, and they should master. Okay. And then one more. At the end of the unit, students should be able to do A, B, C, and D and prove that they can do X by showing so on. So very straightforward, very easy to do. Now, how do we then get it out of here? I'm going to go save. And when I do the save, watch what happens. It is not an assignment. In other words, I, it hasn't been assigned to you. But here, I really need to be careful. So this is where I'm going to put my name. Okay. And I'll do UBD part one. Don't have to put a description in. And I'm going to save that storyboard. Okay. It brings up the storyboard for me to see. All you have to do is go up here and capture that URL. Don't worry about embedding it. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Um, if I go and make it public, and if I hit the embed, you see, it'll let me do it. And that's fine, but it's also just as easy to come up here and go bam. Okay. Now, how many of these are you going to need? Look, by the way, he spelled his name wrong. That's easy enough to fix. That is, that is all you have to do. Now, what you're going to have to be aware of is this thing has more than one part, doesn't it? So you're going to have to go through and do each one of the parts. So here I am. I'm back to where we started. Identify desired results or outcomes. Now I'm going to stop here because now you've seen how the purpose of it and how it works. So now it's, let's slow down and talk about it again within the bigger framework of understanding by design. So what we're looking for here to do in stage one, and this is kind of like where I come from. I think that what we should do is we should think about what is the essential question. Then we should think about, I'm getting ready to start this journey. Where am I going? And that's the establish the goal. I need to be able to identify what I think are the understandings that kids are going to need. And then I can then identify st students will know and students will do. Okay. Scroll down. And as you can see, she even goes through and puts this in place. This is right out of the UBD workbook, by the way. There is another one. And it's right here. So stage two is to come up with your performance task and other evidence if you want to have it. Did you hear what I just said? Again, what am I going to do? Customize it. Now on this one, you know, she does a nice job here, again, giving you sort of a place to do things. But this is going to be where you probably 
want to do a little bit more, um, well, do a little bit more where, where you uh, address some of the issues here. So like, let, let's go up here. See, so like we've got this kid who's doing a basketball on his performance task. Um, is to demonstrate skill by performing or producing something. And it says, example, make a three-point shot. Well, if I go ahead and keep it there, you know, I can just wipe that out and I can say, this is what the kid's going to do, but it doesn't go along with my picture. So you might want to play with the picture. Okay. And again, I can go in and I can do a very simple getting rid of things. I can do an edit, a scene. Um, and I can, you know, change up how I want it to look like. What does it say? I can do it at nighttime. Well, okay, fine. Okay, so I'll update that. Or, like I did before, I can go up here and grab something else that I would rather use. And I can bring it in and get rid of the other one. And delete it out. And now I've got a different way of looking at it. And I can delete out the guy's basketball. I think you're with me. And if I want to do something else in terms of the character. Okay, so I can go ahead and I can click on my little guy here. And I can delete him out. And then I can come up here and I can find a different character that I want to bring in. Uh, very go animate. Like, think about it. Okay. In fact, one of the things that it will do, as an aside, um, is it will let you actually record voices. And um, I tried doing that earlier today. It doesn't work very well. So, you know, I wouldn't do it, frankly. <laughs> And then down here is just a place where you now can change the language of what you want this person to do in here. Now, make sure you look across the top here at these different headings. So you've got things like textables, which is like where you can put in the cartoon bubble talking. You got shapes. You've got web and technology. So you've got different things you can add there. You've got science things you can add. These are props. Um, Kind of cool. Worksheets. And then you can add your own. Okay. So again, what we're doing is we are working through the various parts of this. So now let's back up and think about it. So a performance task. So if I go in here and double click on my writing, I can come in here. The performance task has students to demonstrate a skill by performing or producing something. Students will analyze newspaper stories. For opinion versus fact in the writing. Okay. Bam. Okay. So I might go up here and change this up. Uh, find something that might be a little bit more germane to what I just wrote, but you get the idea. Hope I'm not making anybody sick by flipping through this as fast. Oh, there it is. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay. All right. So then I come over here 
And the next part of this one says, other evidence could include many items. So here, you might want to make it, instead of being a newspaper, you might want to make it electronic. So if I go up here, let's see if we can find an electronic version. Let's go ahead and we'll take out this background. And I'll bring in, well, that's a, let's see what that is. It's a grocery store. Okay, let's get rid of the grocery store. You get what I'm doing. And I'm going to put something in here then that will reflect me looking at this in a different way. And that's it. You know, that's essentially what you're trying to do here. So when you look then down here and it says, this is the task that students, students will analyze, you know, this is the task. Spell newspaper wrong. I can fix that. Other evidence could include many other items. You could put one more over here. What do we do when we're done? We're going to save it. And then we're going to give a title. Steve Swan. Part two. Save the storyboard. It gives me the storyboard. And once again, I can come up here and I can just copy that URL and take it uh, to uh, live text. I'm going to go back. To the assignment and I'm going to go look at stage three part three and here this is where he basically wants us to identify in the stage three part three the instruction and learning experience and as you can see over here, a learning plan is an instructional plan a, or guide for the teacher. This will address common core standards, agendas, and meet the new. What are you doing here? This is where you put in your learning goals, your curriculum standards. That's all it is. Pop over, copy, paste, drop it in there. Learning activities. So in the learning activities, what I might end up doing is I might want to go in and explain exactly what I think kids will actually do. And I probably won't change this too much because it's a bunch of kids standing around the teachers talking. So once again, the teacher is going to go in here. And once again, I can write in here what it is that I think that the kids are going to do, what the activities are. And once again, I'll save it, copy the URL, and put it out there. I really like this. It's a you know fun little exercise. It gives us a chance to play with a way of thinking about it in a sort of graphical format. But at the same time, um, I also think it helps us focus on what to do. So let me do this. And now let's kind of back up and think about this. So what are the established goals? What are we going to do? Where is this journey headed? That's the established goals. Enduring understandings. What is it that kids will understand at the end of this journey that we are on? 
And then what is the essential question that starts us on our way? What are the things that students will know? Now at this point, a lot of what this is can be gleaned from your textbooks, from your curricular guides. Don't have to reinvent wheels here, folks. So I'm trying to get you to realize. This should look like what you really have to do. This, you know, it's that simple. And then over here where it says students will be able to. Now, let's go ahead and, and start thinking about what the technology may look like here. Students will know to use, let me do a math one. Students will know to use their Desmos uh, calculator to understand or to solve for slope. They'll understand that that's what they should do. Students will be able to solve for slope. Boom. Done. Using a Desmos calculator. That's how technology fits and that's how simple it is. One sentence. The performance task. Using a Desmos calculator, students will be able to solve for slope given five problems and apply their answers to real world situations. Other evidence. Students can be given pictures and using um, measuring tools and a Desmos calculator could calculate slope from the images in the pictures. There's your learning activities. You could probably guess that they look a lot like your performance task. We will, learning activity number one, we will understand slope. Learning activity number two, we will practice solving problems for slope. Learning activity number three, introduce the Desmos online calculator to students. Learning activity number four, show students how to use the Desmos calculator to solve for slope. Learning activity number five, students will solve for slope in different problems. Learning activity number six, students will apply their understanding of how to solve for slope into real world problems. Done. Okay. Now, I think I have done a fairly good job of making clear about how all this works. Let me go ahead and I'm going to close out a couple of these windows up here, tabs up here. Then I'm going to jump back over here. And Gary, you and Rachel and I are the only ones in the room, so I'm going to pick on you two. What is it about this process that you might still have a question about? Either the whole idea of understanding by design and the uh, lesson plan format, or specifically about the storyboard that. Now I'll let you either type it in or talk to me either way. Do you want me to go through the process one more time with the storyboard that? You saw me having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that's kind of due to the fact of how they've got it set up. But I think it's... Okay. How about that idea about going through that storyboard that again? 
just to make sure we're all on the same page. And by the way, just to give you a heads up, Backspace didn't work on to delete the uh, stuff I was trying to delete. I had to use my delete key. I'm on a PC. All right. So let's look ahead. So the next time we get together, I'm going to back the truck up a little bit and we're going to take a deep dive into universal design for learning. I think this is extremely important as a part of what we do. Um, so I'm going to take the time to do that. Uh, this will be a fairly extensive, um, you know, exploration of universal design for learning. It's something I, I, am, I find very important. It does not have a direct, in other words, there's, if you look at the understanding by design, don't confuse these two. If you look at the understanding by design, there's nothing in that, in that lesson plan that is a UDL box, should be, but I'll show you where it can fit in there. This is where I think when you start looking at universal design for learning and understanding by design, this is where the technology piece can stand up and really uh, be counted. Now, the other one that's down here, module four, this is nothing more than just a listing of all the different pedagogical tools uh, that you can use for integrating technology into your instruction. And then, ladies and gentlemen, that's the final. As I said, we'll be done with this by Halloween. I know that I went through this tonight, and we went through it rapidly, but we already have spent an entire lesson last week uh, listening to Grant, listening to Jay, and hearing the pieces here and then talking about facets of understanding. Can I, let me make sure that we get facets of understanding. Cause I think this is also still a sticking point that I didn't do a very good job. Facets of understanding. This is part of the Wiggins McTeague design process. Okay. This is not an add on. There is no hierarchy to facets of understanding. There is no hierarchy to facets of understanding. There is, these are just ways that students can do demonstrations of understanding with transfer. That's all. Now, when we look at it through the lens of our technology bent, we can then start thinking about, huh, so if I were using explanation as my facet of understanding, how could that be done using technology? Well, I mean, the obvious one here would be kids use Google Docs. <laughs> You know, the other one that they could do, they could use uh, timelines, so on. Interpretation, narratives, translations, metaphor, images, and, artist, and artistry that they, that provide meaning. What does it mean? Why does it matter? What of it? What does it illustrate or eliminate in the human experience? This is, this is pretty much social studies home, right, turf right here. If you ask me. And again, a variety of tools we could use to demonstrate that. Application, ability to use knowledge effectively in new situations and diverse contexts. So again, this is we're asking kids to take what they have been taught and apply it. My little song and dance I did about slope 
Desmos and all that. Also, the little song and dance I did about uh, understanding the difference between opinion and fact. You know, application. Critical and insightful points of view, perspective. Um, this is where you walk in another person's shoes for a while. And so you try to understand from their point of view. Same thing with empathy. We always ask them, uh, we always ask Grant, what's the difference between perspective and empathy? And he he came back to perspective as being focused on ideas. As you can see down here where he says, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the idea? Is it plausible? What are its limits? So what? what is the novel way to look at this? So he always said perspective was all about the ideas. Empathy was understanding another person's feelings, seeing it through their eyes. I saw empathy done very, very well with a teacher who was doing Native Americans, fifth grade. Very nicely done. And then self-knowledge. What is it that we need to understand about what we know and what we don't know? Epistemological agency, in other words. Um, this is, I think, something that we see a lot in classes where we're trying to get kids to look at their own perspectives and their own ideas about the world. Uh, but it also could be kids talking about their understandings and perspectives on um, using mathematics to solve. Uh, their understanding of what they know and what they don't know about how to do that. And then, of course, there's lots of places where science plugs in, self-knowledge. So again, these are not hierarchical. One is not more important than the other. These are just their ideas about how we can look at understandings. And it's a way of then formulating understandings, task that kids can do as a part of the whole understanding by design process. Okay. And there's a good videos in here that go over that. Um, this is some good rubrics on the different facets of understanding. And if you need an idea about examples, here they are. This is a nice uh, PDF. And then the last thing I want to show you is this, UBD binders. I don't know if you know about binders. Binders is, um, well, binders was an early app that was created before Pinterest came along. And you could probably guess that, you know, <laughs> if you if you looked up understanding by design through the Pinterest app, you would probably get un just inundated. But I left this one in place because there's an awful lot of nice information and tools in here that can help you as you think about what it is you're trying to do when you're looking for the kind of activities that where technology can become a part of what you're doing in your lesson planning. So I kind of let these live, left them alone. Uh, a lot of these probably, you know, we've played with at some point in time. So I've left that out there for you to have access to. That's in the UBD binders down there. So when we get together next week, I will do a very deep dive into universal design for learning. Um, we will play. We'll go in and, and work together. So I just want to make sure that we're good to go on this whole um, storyboard that thing because it worries me 
about the number of times I had have to kind of jump back and forth in and out to discover what it is that um, I'm doing to realize that when I get done, I'm going to have a link that will take me to uh, go animate. I will have three links that will represent part one, part two, part stage one, stage two, stage three of the understanding by design that's in the storyboard that. Uh, don't worry about the student link and all that that's down here. Uh, just go in and log in as me. It'll work just fine. Make sure though you change the title so it represents you. So you'll have one link that you go animate. You'll have three links that'll be your stage one, stage two, stage three of, in your storyboard that. And then also in that uh, live text, there is that. So take a swing at putting that together. And that's all I've got, unless you've got something else for me. So I'm going to ask directly my two folks that are here. Have you got anything else for me? Are we good to go? Good to go. Thank you, Rachel. Gary, you good to go? Okay. All right. You all know how to reach me. 502-457-2937. I don't think you'll complain too much about that we get done early tonight. Uh, we basically took one section and broke into two. And um, next week, we'll be here for a while because next week I will land on universal design for learning and really give you an understanding of it because it's important. I think it's the missing piece. It is the missing piece out of the whole process that we are involved with. Right now, our focus is sitting on understanding by design. That's how we're going to create it. That's our framework. But the missing piece out of the understanding by design whole framework is understanding how to create uh, content that allows for kids who have trouble understanding the content to participate in the content. So I look forward to sharing all that with you next week. Again, one more time, if you have questions, if you have concerns, you know how to reach me at 502-457-2937. Thank you all, Gary. Thank you and Rachel for being here with me tonight. And I'll see you all next week.